In high school, a teacher once told me, Jason, you have to put more effort into things. You can't just skate through life. I said, oh yeah? But what is a skate? What's the difference between a skate and a ray? And where do babies come from? We'll find the answer to all those questions and more as we continue exploring the Tree of Life. Now I know that we've been talking about stingrays a lot recently, so it's time to switch it up with an animal that is completely different. Kinda. The most obvious difference between stingrays and skates is the presence of one or more barbed stingers on the tail. Skates lack stingers, but many have small thorny bumps on their back and tail. Additionally, skates tend to have thicker tails than stingrays, which they can use like a club to bonk away potential predators. While you can know for certain that every flat cartilaginous fish with a stinger is a stingray, the same can't be said for every flat cartilaginous fish without a stinger being a skate. Because as we learned last week, some stingrays don't have stingers, like manta rays and porcupine rays. Porcupine rays add another layer of confusion by also having a thick tail covered in small thorns. We impose rules onto nature, and nature laughs. Another way to differentiate between these animals is to look at where they live. All skates live in salt water, with the exception of one from Tasmania that lives in brackish water. But even so, there are no freshwater skates currently known to science. There are, however, plenty of freshwater stingrays, from the beautifully patterned oscillant river stingray in the Amazon to the giant freshwater stingray in Southeast Asia. The final difference between skates and rays that we're going to look at today is a bit more difficult to see, unless you're lucky enough to observe one giving birth, which seems intrusive. Stingrays give birth to live young in a process called ovoviviparous development, in which eggs develop and hatch inside the mother's body, resulting in a live birth. Skates, on the other hand, undergo oviparous development, with eggs developing and hatching outside the mother's body. Oviparity is common in nature, and every oviparous species has a different way of keeping their eggs safe. But unlike the hard, calcified shells of bird eggs, or the gooey blobs of frog eggs, skates keep their eggs in a strange, pillow-shaped egg case known as a mermaid's purse. Mermaid's purses are produced by all skates, all chimera, and roughly 40% of sharks. They come in a few different shapes and styles, depending on their species, but in the case of skates, the mermaid's purse is usually a rounded rectangle with long, thin, horn-like projections at each corner. These projections are thought to help anchor the egg case to the seafloor. The egg case is mostly composed of keratin, the same substance that's found in your hair and fingernails. This keeps the egg case firm enough to protect the egg inside, but also flexible enough that they don't shatter when they're banged around by the current. Something I never knew until recently is that some mermaids' purses can encase more than one embryo. The largest skate in North America, brilliantly named the Big Skate, lays an egg case that's up to a foot long and can contain up to seven baby skates. Usually though, each egg case protects just one embryo. And once the baby emerges, the egg case will often be swept away by the current and washed up on the beach. Incidentally, this is exactly how I plan on spending my summer. Washed up and on the beach. Next week, prepare to be shocked, when we learn how the electric ray got its name. You will literally never guess. Follow me on social media, like, subscribe, comment, and I'll see you next week. Until then, stay curious, stay connected, and never stop evolving.